Today we have a very special guest, someone I've wanted to get on the channel for a long time. I know a lot of you have read his books, Retirement Income for Life. Uh, I wanna welcome Fred Vitesse to the channel. We're gonna talk about his book, how it integrates with a lot of the planning strategies we talk about, and a lot of the planning and retirement strategies all of you need to implement. So again, I know a lot of you watch these videos, you get content from this and ideas. If you haven't read Fred's book, I highly recommend you. We'll link it below. Um, I don't have it with me right now, it's on my bedside table, but. I, I read it religiously. It really lines up with what we talk about. It's a great tool. For those of you getting close to retirement, you wanna equip yourself, educate yourself, and this is another great tool to do that. So let's welcome Fred to the channel. Perfect, well, Fred, thank you so much for joining us today. I know you're down in Palm Springs, so thanks for taking the time. Um, first question I have for you is, um, maybe what inspired you to write the Retirement Income for Life, do the updates, um, and what can uh, readers hope to take away from those books? I think the inspiration actually happened back in 2016. I was attending a, a seminar that was being, being given by a couple of actuaries at Morneau Chappelle. And, uh, and in the midst of that seminar, two things occurred to me. One of them was I hadn't heard very, very many actuaries talk about this stuff before, about decumulation, about how do you take your savings and unwind them so that you produce income from them. And the second thing I, I was thinking about, too, was that we now have over a thousand Canadians who are turning 65 every day. So it's become such a big thing. And yet, you know, most of the stuff out there, most of the books and, and articles out there are still about saving and uh, accumulating money. So I mm -hmm. felt uh, that the, the time was right to write something about that. There, there's a lot of retired sitting in the market. So it's it's uh, and not just zero information, but a lot of the information out there is, uh, I, I would say, ill-informed ill as well. Uh, Ill-informed uh, could, could, could also be self-serving in some cases, and uh, and maybe misleading for for the, uh, for the for the person who's who's getting the information. Yeah, absolutely. So in your book, which I have here, uh, we've done a few videos uh, in the last few weeks on this as well because I read it on vacation. But uh, in the book, it talks about five enhancements that retirees should look at um, and strongly consider as part of their planning for retirement. So can you quickly maybe walk through each of the five, uh, just from a high level? Uh, people can you know grab the book, and we'll link it below as well. Uh, but talk about the five. Yeah. So the first enhancement would be reducing your, your fees, your, your investment fees. I think it's uh, pretty common out there for people to be investing their monies in mutual funds. And they may have fees of one and a half, two percent if you if you include the advisor fees as well. In some cases, actually even more than two percent. And um, in any event, I'm, I'm suggesting that there are different ways in which they can get those fees down to about 0.6%. And if they have a lot of financial savvy, so they can do everything themselves and use ETFs, they, they can go even, even below 0.6%. But even then, I found, I, sh I showed in the book that um, by getting it down from 1.8% down to 0.6%, this couple could extend their income for another four years or so, which is pretty huge. So that was uh, enhancement number one. Enhancement number two is about where you offload risk. We, we have actually three kinds of, of risk uh, in retirement. One is investment risk. Another one is uh, longevity risk, the risk of living too long, uh, which is kind of a funny way of putting it, but that's how we actuaries talk. And, uh, and the third one would be inflation risk. So you want to offload those risks as, as much as possible to other sources. And one great source of offloading it to would be the government of Canada. And the way you do that, is you uh, start your, your Canada Pension Plan pension at age 70 and started starting it at 65 or earlier. Right now, I think in Canada, maybe 2% of the population starts it at 70. And even then, I kind of wonder whether they're doing it because they're, they're savvy or just because they forgot to apply earlier. Yeah. So it's even maybe worse. The problem is even worse than than we uh, than it may look. Yeah. But in any event, um, that, that can make a really big difference because you're getting a 42% bump by starting it at 70. So you get a pension that's 42% bigger, that's inflation protected, and also longevity protected. You get it even if you live until 110. Enhancement number three is where you offload even more risk. And, and now you only, this is by, by purchasing an annuity from a, a life annuity from an insurance company. And this, uh, and by the way, I uh, collect no compensation whatsoever for giving this kind of advice. I think maybe some of the insurance companies were a little surprised initially when I when I was starting to, to give this advice back in 2018. But uh, you, there's the two kinds of risk that you can uh, uh, reduce by doing this are, are the investment risk again, because you're, you're not, that money is not exposed to the, invest, the capital markets and also longevity risk. Both of those are, what it doesn't do is it doesn't do anything for inflation risk. And that's one of the reason why I'm not quite as gung-ho on this enhancement as I am on enhancement two. Mm -hmm. 
Fourth, we have where you use a tool, a retirement calculator tool, and I created PERC for this purpose, to estimate how much uh, how much income you can you can take in retirement. And this is like an essential thing. If you have a lump sum of money, uh, you have your life savings, and you want to uh, start getting an income in retirement, you have to know how much you can you can take out. You can uh, obviously guess too high or too low. People uh, with I guess an excess of caution tend to uh, tend to guess too low. Uh, just because they are being cautious and they don't know what they don't know, and so they'll they'll be uh, cautious, and and that that's not right either because they end up having too much money left at the end of their lives, which uh, passes along to the next generation. But it was money that they could have enjoyed. So uh, PERC it stands for Personal Enhanced Retirement Calculator. Um, it's something I created you know, about six or seven years ago. It's gone through a considerable evolution since then. And what this does is it, it uses the enhancements to help people figure out the maximum amount of, of income that they can draw safely from their retirement. And then finally, uh, the, fi the fifth uh, enhancement is having a backstop. Uh, and the backstop most people have, uh, because I think 90% of seniors own their own home, the backstop they have is their home equity. So how do you tap into that home equity? You want to tap it into, into it in a way in which you don't have to um, pay back the, the loan, at least not, not while you're still alive and still living in the house. And the one way you can do that is with a reverse mortgage, which I think still has kind of a bad reputation in Canada. I think it's kind of an ill-deserved bad reputation. Uh, but if if you reach a certain age, uh, you're 75 or 80, um, and you find you're running maybe a little bit short of money, um, and you have all that equity in the house that you're not going to otherwise use in your lifetime, then why not tap into it? Mm -hmm. um, so the thing, the caution I, I make, though, when it comes to um, using uh, reverse mortgages, don't start it too soon, because if you leave the house, then then you have to pay back the, the loan. Yeah. So that's something people shouldn't be doing. And so those are the five enhancements. Yeah, perfect. And, and it's good backstop in another way in that, you know, we always tell people you know, to backstop in that if you ever need to go to a care facility or in-home care, it's a bit of an asset base there, because a lot of people look at, well, should I buy long-term care insurance? And I know you mentioned in your book, I was reading it last night, you know, you're not a big fan. I'm not a big fan. Um, I, I don't know how you could be with the products that are out there in Canada, but uh, it's another way to look at the backstop as well. And, and your enhancements kind of tying with the three that we really focus on here on this channel, which is uh, the RSP meltdown, which ties into CPP timing, like bumping the CPP later. The RSP meltdown is kind of draw down your registered accounts in, a, you know, in the most tax efficient manner. The second enhancement we look at is, is leveling out your average tax rate, which, you know, when we look at it for 99% of people, that typically allows you to pay less taxes to CRA, which we all want to do, obviously, both while you're alive and, and later on in life when you pass away, uh, putting more, you know, after-tax money in your pocket. And the third one is kind of a laddered income strategy, which is really, we call it, for, you know, the go-go stage, the slow-go and the no-go stage, saying, look, when you're, you know, from retirement to about 75 is you're going to have your health, you can do more stuff, you can spend more money. So go spend it. Um, not driving up your taxable income, but just, you know, creating a plan where, okay, let's take, you know, instead of 65,000 level, let's take 70, then maybe 62, then 55, or whatever the numbers work out to be. But uh, kind of, you know, these enhancements really add to a better retirement, more money in your pocket. Uh, a lot of people shy away from the CPP timing. Again, most people take it in their early 60s. And a lot of people say, oh, I took it in my early 60s because my neighbor did or a coworker. You know, it, it's kind of bad advice or ill-informed advice. So um, this ties me into my next question for you, Fred, which is what are some common misconceptions about retirement planning uh, that you've addressed in the book or even that you've seen over your career at Tamorno Chappelle? Well, the uh, biggest misconception certainly is, is CPP and starting CPP early. Well, the vast majority of people keep on doing it in spite of, uh, the, I'm not, not the only one out there who's, who's talking about it, that they ought to be starting it uh, later as opposed to earlier. But uh, that would still be the biggest misconception. And the reason why it happens is because um, people focus too much. Well, here's what happens. Um, I, I actually put this as a goal in my book, that one of the goals of the book is uh, to help people um, have money that'll, that'll last uh, as, as, as long as they do. So if they live, to a ripe old age, then they still have money until that time. And you say, well, that's kind of obvious. It's almost motherhood. But that, that isn't the way people actually act. The way they act when it comes to Canada Pension Plan is they're afraid that they're going to look foolish if they, they, if they die young and they, they haven't, they haven't uh, taken as much money out of the CPP as they could have taken. So that's kind of how people act. In fact, I, one, of the, one of the classic um, comments I got from one of my articles about this 
um, in the Globe and Mail was somebody saying, I I imagine how mad you would be if you died early and, and you and you hadn't uh, contacted all your CPP. Mm -hmm. I mean, that kind of shows you how, how people are thinking out there. So that is maybe the biggest misconception. And the reason why that except misconception happens, I believe, is because uh, they may, they misunderstand uh, life expectancy. So if you ask the average 60-year-old, 65-year-old, how long they expect to live until, and so let's say they think they're, they have a normal lifespan, they'll think it'll be like 81, 82, something in that kind of range, maybe 83 if they're, uh, they're female. Um, but that, they're measuring life expectancy from birth, mm -hmm. and they ought to be measuring life expectancy from their current age. And if you're currently 65 and you're a man, you you can expect to live until about 87 in Canada. If you're a woman, you can live until about 89, 89 and a half. And actually, if you're in the public sector, maybe over 90 or a teacher. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so so that's something that's another misconception they have. Well, they figure, well, their break even age is much younger than that. Now, that's why that's why they want to take their CPP early. And you've been preaching this for many years. I've been on the YouTube here for, you know, three, four years preaching it. And, you know, before that to our clients and it's hard to get it across. And that's why I always say, you know, retirement is 10% financial, 90% psychological. And the psych psychological piece, I can show you the financial piece, Fred, you talk about the financial piece in your book and, and map out the numbers. The psychological decision-making of, yeah, taking, you know, I want to get as much from the government. We want to pay the government as little as possible in taxes, and we want to get over as much as possible. And people I find are using the wrong data. When you talk about longevity, they're using the wrong data, which actually is gearing them to decisions to actually collect less money in theory overall in their lifetime from CPP. That's right. In fact, so I had, I had, a, I had a chart which appeared in the, in the Globe and Mail about a month ago or so, and I was looking at winners and losers. Um, and I can't remember the exact numbers. I had a different chart for men, men versus women, but I was showing that roughly 80% are winners if they if they start collecting their CPP late at age 70 versus 65. And 20% would be losers because they actually do die young. But that's 20% versus 80%. I figure you you should you should play the odds. You do that with horses. You do that with in Las Vegas. You may as well do it with uh, your Canada pension plan as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and a big thing. A lot of people have bumped into recently, and especially if you get closer to retirement, is you know you want to take investment risk off the table. And I always tell people like delaying your CPP, drawing down your registered accounts earlier, you take that investment risk off the table, among other things, obviously. But a lot of people, you know, we deal with a lot of DIY investors, and it's like, yeah, I, I'm kind of getting tired of this. It's stressful. It's so whatever. Well, let's kind of shuffle that off to the government, that risk off to the government, and and it's just kind of grasping that concept. Yeah, because if you're in your late 60s or 70s, you just don't have enough time anymore. If, if, we, if we have a really bad investment, a, a bout of investment uh, returns, which you saw what happened in Japan. I mean, they they their markets imploded back in 1989. And it took them more like 40 or you know, 30, 35 years yeah. until those markets re recovered again. We were, so you might be able to afford to do that if you're age 30, but you can't do that if you're 65 or 70. So you should take some risk off the table. No question. Absolutely. Um, last question I have for you here is how should retirees adjust their financial plans as they progress through retirement and, you know, things change in that? So with the PERC, you know, the, the Personal Enhanced Retirement Calculator, what it does is that I actually give it spits out a number for you. It tells you what your, your target income can be. And it says, if you take this amount of income, uh, inflation adjusted, so it'll actually go up with, with inflation. Um, if you, you can take this much out for the rest of your life, I, I caution to people, don't just do it once. Uh, keep on going back to it, maybe on an annual basis, certainly once every couple of years, because circumstances will change. Um, circumstances, the things, kind of things that that will change, the basic thing will be the your assets will change. Um, CPP might change. Uh, the They might go up faster or slower, slower than you think it might. Inflation might change. And the assumptions underlying the, the calculator uh, keep on changing as well. So we, we will kind of reflect what the current environment is. So I say, well, keep an eye on it. And what you can do with that is you know, you it'll keep on at least like little mid course corrections and it'll kind of keep you in the right zone of the right amount of income to be collecting for your lifetime. And um, so, for example, I was mentioning earlier that the fifth enhancement number five was a reverse mortgage. So I tried to to actually uh, engineer a situation in which a reverse mortgage might be required. But if you if you use perk properly and you do keep on adjusting your income as you should every every year or two years. You find that the, the odds are you'll never have to actually, you know, exercise that that enhancement number five. And again, like I, I always like to say, keep that, you know, people ask me a lot, should I 
sell my house and rent in retirement or, you know, and, and that creates a few issues, creates, you know, a bunch of non-registered cash that creates, you know, taxable income. That's number one. But number two, it, it kind of takes that enhancement five or that, that, that buffer in the background away for the reverse mortgage, for the care facility, all of that. So definitely like to, to keep that there just in case. So um, anyway, Fred, any closing remarks on your side that uh, for the viewers? I know a lot of people read your stuff online. Uh, respect. I know a lot of our viewers have read your book and I know a lot more will now <laughs> that you've been on the channel here. So uh, I know what you talk about here and why I want to bring you on the channel. What you talk about in this book aligns like 100% with what we talk about on this channel again and again. And we're trying to educate people and get them to a better place in retirement. And that's what this book does as well. So uh, any closing remarks for our viewers uh, uh, before we jump off here? Um. I guess the one thing I want to say is that people should 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 really be using expert advice. If they have the the kind of mind that they can actually absorb all this themselves and become self-taught, become a, a great DIY kind of investor, then great. But I think very few people can can do this effectively because if you're not a if you're not a professional, you always kind of wonder like you don't know what you don't know, and you're kind of wondering if you missed something in the process. So it's important to get to get uh, proper advice out there. Um, you want to make make sure that the, the advice you're getting is is a non unbiased advice, and so uh, it may, may, so for, so commission based advice is you, you have to look at it a bit, bit more carefully. Having said that, you still want to understand this stuff as as well as you can yourself. So it's I think a good. Um, exercise for people to go through to to buy a couple of of investment books. They don't have to buy my book, but yeah, to buy a couple of books on investment so they understand the basic principles of this stuff. Yeah, and as you mentioned at the outset, not a lot of people uh, talk about or or write about the decumulation. Right? We it's all about accumulation. Get to retirement. You get there, you kind of hit this wall and say, "Well, now what? You know, I have this big nest egg. How do I do this efficiently?" So. Uh, again, your book highlights that. We try to highlight this on the channel. So I uh, want to say a huge thanks to you for coming on the channel. I do really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we'll get you on here again soon. That's, it's, my, it's my pleasure. Uh, thanks a lot. Okay. Bye-bye.